I'm here with the brand new M4 MacBook Pro Max. This is the fully specced out version, except it only has four terabytes of storage, but otherwise it has the most RAM and the most cores, all of the things in this 14 inch MacBook Pro. And this is my M3 Max, which is also fully specced out. It's last year's model. It has four terabytes, not the eight. And so it is the highest performing device that you could buy last year. Now, the reason that I have both of these devices here is that I wanna compare them. We live in a world where I don't necessarily have to have a giant laptop anymore. We have things like Apple Vision Pro, which allow me to have a nice big working display that I can take anywhere. I find myself often in using my laptop connected to an Apple Studio display as well. And so while I like having a laptop for its portability for those days that I want to go work from a coffee shop or a co-working space or something like that, I find myself having to carry a big bag with me to carry my 16-inch laptop, whereas I have a lot of smaller bags that a 14-inch laptop would fit in. And considering the performance of these laptops are getting so good, can I exist with a 14-inch laptop? That's something that I'm going to test. But in this video, we're going to spend a little bit of time seeing if there are any performance degradations between going with a smaller laptop. Now, obviously this is M3 Max, this is M4 Max, and so there's gonna be a difference there. But in tests that I've seen other people do, I've seen that maybe the 14 inch overheats a little bit and is kind of just held back a bit by the size of the device and not having the appropriate cooling that the 16 inch device has. So I wanted to see what's the comparison because if the 14 inch is not going to outperform the 16 inch of last year's model, both in performance, battery life, all of those good things, then there's no point in me upgrading and I might as well just stick with my M3. So right now we have both of these computers have been plugged in to power and they both are at 100% battery. And so we're gonna go ahead and unplug both of them at the same time here and go off of battery power as we perform all of these tests. Now, I received this laptop yesterday and the first thing that I did was connect it via the new Thunderbolt 5 cable from Apple. So this is the Thunderbolt 5 cable that Apple launched as well. I connected these two devices together and used Migration Assistant to move everything from the M3 over to the M4. So these laptops are carbon copies as far as all of the files, all of the applications, everything that's on both of them. This M4 might as well be a year old as far as how I've been using it because it has everything on it that the M3 has. I've also made sure that both of them have the most up-to-date software. And so if we go and look at about this Mac, we can see that both of them are on Sequoia 15.1. And the M4 actually came with 15.1, but there was an additional 15.1 update. So I'm not sure if it came with like a beta build or something, but it went from 15.1. There was a software update for 15.1. Both of them are on stable 15.1 builds. And I've been spending a little bit of time just clicking around and using both of them. The first thing that I noticed is a little bit of a difference in the color temperature. Now, not much of a difference. Yesterday, it seemed to be a big difference. And I know that night shift and you know the laptops themselves will kind of shift colors based on the color temperature of the light and the also how bright the light is in the area to make the image look great at all times. This is the nano texture finish. This is the non nano texture. Last year's models didn't come with nano texture. You can even see here, as I move my hand across the screen, you can see the glare on this laptop, but as I move my hand over here, no glare. Now let's just see what we can get as far as the reflection. You can see that it's a bit different. With the Nano, it seems to spread out the light. On the glossy screen, it doesn't spread the light out like that or filter the light or diffuse the light, I guess is maybe a photography term. I'm thinking of, of a diffuser that spreads the light out like that. Whereas here, I see a lot more glare, where here I could still see and make everything out. There's definitely a difference between the nano texture and the glossy. And just my time spent here in my studio with the laptop so far, where there are different lights coming at different angles, there's distractions over on the screen here and there isn't over here. Everything is nice and clear over here. And on the glossy display, 
I can see things in the display that are reflecting, whether it's the light behind me. And if I don't have my studio lights on and it's just overhead lights, it actually gets worse. And so I think studio lights might make it a bit better because the lighting in here I've set up to be nice and smooth and not much of a distraction. But in most other environments, you have light coming in from windows, you've got overhead lights, you've got lots of stuff going on and you end up with a lot of glare on the glossy display. So I think the nano texture is almost a must. There has been a lot of people saying, yeah, but the nano texture display might not be as sharp. And I'll be honest with you, when I'm staring at both of these and looking at both of these displays, I don't really notice much of a difference. Now let's take a look at Adobe Lightroom. That's an application I spend a lot of time in because I'm a photographer and I take a lot of pictures. And so Adobe Lightroom would be a good one to kind of zoom in and see what kind of difference we have on images. And so let's go and open up this image of my son playing basketball. He's going for a layup here. And let's just zoom in here. Now, this was a little bit of a lower light situation, definitely a little bit of noise in the image. So this is not from the laptop because both of these have a little bit of noise. I would say though, in looking at these closely, the nano texture does emphasize the noise in the image a little bit. If I'm looking really close, there's definitely noise and I can see it. Maybe it's actually just smoothing out the noise. So here I could see kind of a darkness underneath his chin. It's less dark over here. And so just like when I was shining the light at the display and it seems to kind of diffuse things, I, I'm wondering if it's also doing that to the image. It's diffusing it and kind of spreading out the light a little bit. I mean, I, I don't really know. I'm not obviously a, a highly technical in how displays are built or what this nanotechnology does, but I do have to say I'm noticing a little bit of a difference and I don't mind what I'm seeing over here on the nano texture display. Now, it might be a little bit hard to see in the camera angles here, but we're on 14 inch. We are set to the more space resolution. So this is 1800 by 1169. And if we come over here, I'm set to more space, which is 2056 by 1329. That doesn't sound like a lot more. It's a, a couple hundred in each direction. But when it comes to Lightroom, when it comes to looking at things, you can see just how much more room we have over here than we have on the 14 inch. And this is where I initially was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to handle the 14 inch. I don't necessarily wanna say lower resolution because it's, it's not, it's a smaller display and the resolution is different than the larger display. So the larger display is gonna have a lot more information that it's able to display. And we can see that in this basketball image here, that if I put my son's hair right on the top of the display, and we look here, we've got all the way down to his knee and we've got basically just below the basketball here. So a lot more working area on the 16 inch display. And that's something that might end up being a deal breaker for me as I spend a little bit of time with the 14 inch seeing if that's okay, knowing that yes, I can put on the Apple Vision Pro when I have the Apple Vision Pro on, I get the same resolution because I'm working off of the Apple Vision Pro's resolution not the laptops themselves. And so while we're in Lightroom here, let's actually do an export test. And so I have a folder and an album of images here. There's 48 images and they're all downloaded to both devices here. So both devices have these images saved locally. And let's go ahead and we'll choose large export. And so we're gonna go and choose large. Then we'll choose a, I'm just gonna put them in a folder. Let's put basketball folder and let's hit export and go. So both of them have started exporting and these images are saved on the computer. So there's no need to download them from the web because Adobe Lightroom, this version, this particular version of Lightroom will store a lot of them in the cloud and give you a lower resolution preview on the computer. And so if you need access to the image and it's not stored locally on the computer, it actually will download the original and then render out, you can render out or export out the full version, which could add to the amount of time that it takes to render out images, which is why I stored them all locally. So to be honest, we've got the M3 Max over here is ahead and it is about to finish. It is finished. And we still have a little bit longer to go on the 14 inch here on the M4 is finished now. And so, you know, I'm not running a clock or a timer, 
but that was a bit of a difference. If I was exporting hundreds of images, the M3 Max could have gotten done significantly faster than the M4 Max, which is definitely unexpected. I was thinking that the M4 might be faster until it starts to heat up. So now we're gonna go and look at a Final Cut Pro project. So we're gonna scroll down here. This is actually footage from the DJI Inspire 3. This is DNG raw footage. And so we're gonna go ahead and open up the project here, which I, we're not gonna be able to tell which one opens up faster because I accidentally didn't double click, but let's go ahead and get these projects opened and we will export out a small project here. We've got two minute, 17 second project, and this is high resolution. I'm gonna to need to reconnect to these because I downloaded them off of my server. So let's relink the files. All right, so I've got all of the files relinked. All right, let's do a quick playback. It's like both of these computers are having no problem playing back this footage. And I know that for a fact because I originally edited this on the M3 Max. So both of these are gonna have no problem playing this back. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna export this as Apple device 4K. So let's go ahead and choose Apple device 4K. Both are gonna be 347 megabytes and we'll choose a location here and hit save on both of these. And we're going to see which one finishes first as far as the render. Now, so far we're at 18, 21, 24. I don't know, it's really hard for me to tell which one is ahead. I'm actually gonna have to sit back a little bit just to see if I could tell which one finishes first. So far, it does look like the M4 is pulling ahead. The M4 hitting 60 right now, while the M3 hitting 60 right now. So it looks like with the video rendering in Final Cut Pro, the M4 is pulling ahead just a little bit. I mean, the difference is so negligible here in the render out of this video footage that it's gonna be hard to tell which one finishes first. It does look like the M4 may finish just a little ahead of the M3. And the M4 finished, it was like at 82% when it finished. So also keep in mind, like both of these computers have a ton of applications open. If we look down in the dock, we have Spark email open. I have Brave Browser open that probably has 20 plus tabs and both of these are exact replicas of each other. I've got Messages app, I've got Teams, the Reminders app, Notion, ClickUp, Safari, Lightroom is still open. And we're doing all of that while rendering out video footage as well. And so that tends to be how I work. Like, you know, people do these tests quite often with just the one application open. And rightfully so, running these tests and trying to compare things to last year's models or the previous year's models. But for me, it's which one is the best workhorse computer. And right now, what I wanna find out is which one's faster at rendering, which one's faster at just getting work done. Now we're gonna jump over to Adobe Premiere Pro because I do spend a lot of time in Adobe Premiere Pro. My video editor uses Premiere Pro. So far the M4 is opening a little bit. I don't know, they opened up at the exact same time. So let's go ahead and it says, please stand by for playback. The M4 is not doing that so far. The M3 is, it's initializing the GPU over here. The M4 did not have to do that. However, that could just be maybe because of a software update or something like that. In all honesty, this is the first time that I'm opening Premiere Pro over here on the M4. I've obviously opened Premiere Pro hundreds of times on the M3. So let's make sure that I have the original files connected and not proxies. I typically receive my edited video files with proxies and so I need to reconnect the original video files here. So we'll go ahead and do that on both of these so that we are editing with the raw footage out of these Blackmagic cameras that I film with. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit spacebar to play on both of these just so we can see playback performance. Let's first change playback resolution to full on both of these just so that we can see how well they play back. Let's go ahead and start that. 
Hey, it's Jerry, and in this video, I'm going to talk about my experiences so far with the iPad Mini 7th generation. Now, I am a 6th generation owner, so one would ask why I decided to upgrade. And all, all right, I, I am not seeing any issues here, here with either of these devices. I actually want to see uh, what kind of RAM usage, what kind of, let's see, we got CPU usage is at 11, oh no, it's up to 40% over here. We're at 163 Fahrenheit on the temperature over here. We're at 40, 50, it's kind of jumping around, but we're at 190 over here now. 195 Fahrenheit, 184 Fahrenheit over here. So as we continue to play this video, we see the M3 is actually a little bit hotter and that's consistent. It's still 196, it's been jumping around. Now it's up to 200. Over here, I saw it get up to 195, but it's down to 174. And so as I'm like continuing to play Blackmagic raw footage, this is one 6K feed and three 4K feeds in a multicam that's playing back. Okay, I'm seeing 209 over here, 204 over here. Now they're starting to level out a little bit. Now this one dropped back down to 180, whereas the M3 is still up around 210. I don't even hear any fans. I'm listening. I don't hear much as far as fans go. I'm not hearing much. And so that's, that's pretty good. Let's actually do a render test now. So let's go ahead and pause these. We'll go to the export tab. I'm gonna choose, typically what I use is YouTube 2164K Ultra HD. So we'll choose that export option just so that we have the same preset on both of these. It states that the file size should be 5,449 megabytes on both of these. And they're both saving to the same folders within the computer. So let's go ahead and export. And we're gonna let this ramp up. Let's start it right there, both at the same time. We're gonna let this ramp up just a little bit and kind of see what performance we end up getting. I also wanna look at the temperature as well. Now, I know that both of these are a bit different. The M4 is an M4 Max, this is an M3 Max. And so the cores, both for CPU and GPU are gonna be different. So it doesn't really matter to me necessarily what the performance is there as far as those numbers. It's how fast is one of these rendering things out and how hot are they getting? Right now, I'm looking at the temperatures on the M3 and we are at 228 Fahrenheit. Over here, we are at 211 Fahrenheit. And so we're a bit cooler over here. And now I just got an iStats menu notification for above 203 degrees. iStats is running in the background as well, but we seem to be getting higher temperatures over here. I can now hear fans on both laptops. Fans are spinning, the time remaining. We've got 12 minutes, 24, 12 minutes. They're about the same really, as far as the amount of time left in this render. And so I'm gonna let this go for a little bit. We wanna see obviously which one finishes first. Also keep in mind, I've got a ton of applications open in the background and we're running off of battery power. So let's go ahead and I'll check back in in a little bit and we'll see what those temperatures are doing. Okay, you guys, this has been crazy. Premiere Pro 4K project export. We have less than two minutes left on the M3 Max. We have still just over seven minutes on the M4. I actually, at the exact same time, went and made sure that we were on high performance mode. So we are in high power mode on battery. I went ahead and changed that on both of these laptops just to make sure. Now let's go back over to Premiere. We've got a minute 20 left over here, six minutes, 54 seconds over here. Now, why is this happening? Why is the M4 so much slower than the M3 here? Well, let's take a look at the stats and I'm actually going to record this because it's kind of hard to see in my camera view here. If we look at the M4, you can see the CPU is at 1.8 gigahertz. And so we've got 1.8 gigahertz at 172 temperature. Over here, we have 2.37, 2.5 gigahertz at 182. So the M3 is able to get a little bit warmer. And you'll also notice, look at all of the cores. The efficiency cores and performance cores are all lit up. However, over here on the M4, we have efficiency cores all going but performance cores, a lot of them are not even being utilized, you guys, that is crazy. And you can see here, efficiency cores are pinned at 100 and performance cores at 42. 
Over here, we have efficiency cores at uh, mid 90s and performance at mid, mid or upper 90s as well. Look at the GPU. We've got almost 100% on the GPU here and 172 temperature. And over here, we have 82, 83, and 170. That is, and the M4 or the M3 actually finished the render while we still have five minutes left over here on the M4. And uh, you can see we're at 83% GPU here. Both the fans are going pretty good on these laptops. Obviously the M3 is starting to spin down and cool off now because it's finished its job while as the M4 is still going. Why is that the case? Well, it comes down to what's going on inside these devices. One is larger, which means it has a lot more area to dissipate that heat. Not only is there a lot more area space in here for that heat to be dissipated and blown out, there's a lot more aluminum chassis here. And so the 16 inch laptop just has more room to dissipate heat off of the CPU and GPU whereas the 14 inch has a lot less space and it has to try and push all of that air and dissipate all of that heat with a lot less area space to work with. And we're seeing massive differences in the performance here between the both of these. Now, you can't argue that maybe Premiere Pro isn't optimized yet for the M4. I just don't think that's the case because if we look at the temperatures, the temperatures on both of these, I mean, the M3 was able to get hotter. And so the M3 can get a little bit warmer and not have any problems. It's also allowing all of those cores to come online, whereas the M4 14 inch is not allowing that because it needs to keep the temperature from getting out of control. And so instead of letting everything go, it pulls back a little bit, it throttles back and prevents the internals from getting too hot. And that is probably going to be the nail in the coffin for me with the 14 inch version of the laptop. And I've always thought that in the past, I want the resolution, I want the performance, but these days with the better performing chips as Apple has continued to optimize, is there that big of a difference between the two? I know for a fact that if I ordered a 16 inch M4 version of this laptop, so this same laptop, but a 16 inch version, I would get superior performance. There'd be no comparison between this 14 inch and the 16 inch because of the additional cooling available. Now I know that maybe not all of you are worried about video editing performance or photo export performance, but these are good tests that would cover gaming. It would cover compiling big data sets, but testing the performance like this shows how the system is going to work under stress. And whether you are getting a device like this because you wanna do some gaming on the Mac, or perhaps you do a lot of heavy graphics work, a lot of 3D design, or you're compiling big code base projects and you need the performance, you're gonna see a degradation on the 14 inch. Now we look at the size of these devices. Yes, the 14 inch is a bit more portable. I'll be able to put it in a smaller bag. Probably 80% of the time, it's gonna have more than enough performance for what I'm doing. But when it comes to rendering out video, I know that the 14 inch laptop is going, I mean, it's still rendering. We have 35 seconds left on this project. And I've been sitting here talking for probably about four minutes about the differences here and we're still working over here on the 14 inch M4. So for me, I know that size does matter when it comes to the laptops. I'm going to have to go with the larger laptop because I need that additional performance. When I'm rendering out a lot of videos, perhaps I'm putting out a new course and I have 50, 60 videos that I need to render out. It's gonna take a lot longer to do that on the M4 than it will on the M3 in this instance. And we just finished finally over here on the M4 Max, which is pretty crazy. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna save this project. We're gonna close, we'll just go ahead and quit out of Premiere Pro. We've been spending a little bit of time here. I've probably been filming and running these tests for about 45 minutes. And let's take a look at what kind of battery life we have left on these. So. The last charge, obviously, you can see on both of these, last charge to 100% at 820 AM. And we are at 902 AM now. And that is where we are at on our performance. And our battery level on the M3 over here is 77% and the battery over here is 68%, and the fans are still spinning and working on cooling down the M4. And so the M4 is 10%, about 10% lower on its battery life 
just from these tasks that we have performed here so far. So even in regards to long-term usage, if I wanted to go to a coffee shop, if I was out on the road and I wanted to do some rendering, I would definitely have to plug in the M4 14 inch laptop way earlier than I would the 16 inch because of the additional battery. And obviously because of the additional time it takes to perform its tasks due to the thermal throttling that's taking place on the 14 inch. So those are the tests that I wanted to run. Obviously there are lots of things open on these computers. As you can see, tons of applications that have been running. So the last thing that I wanna do is a quick speaker test on these devices. For me, I don't often use the speakers on my laptop. I'm usually using AirPods or something like that, but speaker tests can be important depending on what your use case is for your laptop. So let's do that real quick. All right, so what do you think? Audio sounds pretty close to the same for me, maybe a little bit deeper, a little bit louder out of the 16 inch, but they both sound really good. And my microphone is right here, so I wanted to make sure that both laptops were placed in the same position in regards to my microphone so that the audio wouldn't be affected by their position. So final thoughts, what am I thinking? Well, I think you already know, and that's that I am just not gonna be able to go with a 14 inch laptop. I wanted to because I recently switched to an 11 inch iPad Pro, and I've loved the smaller footprint of the 11 inch iPad Pro. However, the 14 inch MacBook Pro M4 is not going to cut it in regards to its overall performance. Because when it comes to rendering out large video projects, especially projects projects for YouTube or my online courses. I want the most performance that I can get. And based on both of these devices, I'm just not seeing that out of the 14 inch M4 Max. And that means I'm probably gonna be sticking with a 16 inch laptop until heat no longer becomes a problem. And that may never be the case. We may always be dealing with thermal throttling issues when it comes to our laptops. And it makes sense. The more area that you have for cooling, the more cooling that's gonna be able to take place. And that is definitely gonna to be a contributing factor. So if you're like me and you want the most performance for the device, you're probably going to need to stick with a 16 inch laptop. And I haven't yet decided whether I'm going to return this M4 14 inch and purchase a 16 inch M4 or spend another year with my M3 Max. I probably will be spending another year with my M3 Max because it just performs so well still. And I'll put links down in the description below to both of these laptops. You can still find the M3 Max out there. It's definitely discounted now, and it's a great buy because it performs really well. I don't know yet if it would be as fast as a 16 inch version of this laptop, but I have to say it performs extremely well in compared to the 14 inch version. So that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks so much for watching all the way through. I appreciate it. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna get occasional updates, news and tips from me, definitely sign up to my newsletter down below. It's on Substack. Use the link in the description to sign up. I try my best to send about one email a week. But that's it for me. Thanks for being here. We'll see you in the next one.